Welcome. Welcome. Housewives of true crime. Housewives of true crime. It looks like you have a sweatshirt. Is it still cold as balls over there in the California? It's still cold and gloomy. Stop rubbing it in. <laughs> you see what I'm wearing? Tank yeah. top, 80 degrees. No, I put out like my beach decor. You know, I changed my pillows. I'm bringing in summertime energy mm-hmm. to my casa because it's going to warm up, right? It better. It better for your sake. Or you can just come to Texas. But if you guys want to see us, we are on YouTube now. So you can check us out there at Housewives of True Crime. And also, I wanted to just tell everybody that hasn't joined us on Patreon or bonus yet that we do do an extra episode every Thursday. So check us out there. That's one extra way to support us and get another crime in once a month. Gretchy just did a real good one last week. So on somebody famous, famously beautiful also. Did you forget her name? No, Betty, Betty Page. I did not. <laughs> oh my I didn't. God, she stopped. Giggle. No, not that bad. No, I'm drinking my prime. It's giving me my caffeinated energy. Your energy. Yeah. So so I wanted to tell you this last week and I was in California, you know that because I had a bat mitzvah to go to. Mm-hmm. And for those of you that don't know, it's a, a big party for Jewish children that turn 13. And some people do it like real and this particular oh, bigger than your wedding. It's a thing. Yeah. Yes. And this particular child's bat mitzvah was, I mean, (laughs) so much bigger than my wedding. It was so amazing. But I was in line for this cotton candy. They had these little stations and they had this cotton candy station for figured cotton candy, kind of like the stuff that I'm looking forward to getting in Japan. And Kaden was like, I want one. And you know, these are all 13 year olds. And my 11 year old is small. He's a small 11 year old. So he is miniature compared to these other kids there. So he is just getting cut on, like everybody's cutting in front of him. So I walk up and he's like, mom, can you stand here with me so that we can get the cotton candy? Dude, this fucking line, like all these kids just kept cutting in front of me. And I am just, you know, I'm like, I'm trying to keep my cool because I'm like, I was invited and this is really nice. And I don't want to be a bitchy lady. It's not like you're at an amusement park where you can just be like, "Uh, excuse me, but I believe the line starts back here. Like you you know, you got to play it cool. You never know who somebody is. They'll yes. be like, it's my cousin's bought mitzvah, bitch. Yeah, okay. that's exactly I what I was thinking. I mean, that's Pat. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that is exactly my thought process. And then even some freaking bitch adult gets in front of me. Like, and she totally knows. She just like looks at me. She doesn't give a shit. And then at this point, I've been standing there for an hour. I'm not even joking you. And I'm like, okay, my feet are starting to really hurt. Yeah. And I'm getting a little pissed. So these two little boys walk up up and they're about my daughter's age, you know, 13. And they're like, Oh, we were, we were right here. And I was like, Oh, I'm like, no, you weren't. I was like, I've, I've been here for an over an hour. And so I know everybody that's been in this line. And I was like, and I know you weren't in this line. And he goes, no, 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 we were here. And I was like, I looked at him and I was like, okay, like, listen, if you and your heart can say that you were here and you can go to bed tonight and feel good with yourself, then step right in front of me. I was like, but if you're going to go to bed tonight and regret your decision about lying and knowing you're cutting in front of a 10 year old, then I would suggest go to the back of the line party, right? It's like, a you know, it's a religious party. (laughs) And he goes, I think I'll go to the back of the line. I was like, I thought the little shit was going to still cut. Oh, there was one, the moral one that was in front. He was like, I'm going to go to the back of the line. And the other little kid was like, no, we were here. I'm like, "Mm -hmm, I, I, uh, uh uh-huh. But then they both ended up going (laughs) to the back of the line or at least behind me. All right. So yeah, that was, everybody was, they thought my story was so funny. I was like, well, dude, it's a good way to like, come on. Gage? Come on, kids. Yes. Yeah, and I'm like, kids. okay, which one of you guys? I'll know who's going to date my daughter. The one that has the moral compass. Right. The other one, take a hike. Much? Take a hike. Other All than right, that. I'm looking today. Do I look good? You because look good. Because Department of Motor Vehicles today. Oh, and you made yourself up to get a DMV a photo? I got up. Yeah. I got my hair did yesterday. It's, it was good timing. But my driver's license is going to expire tomorrow. So I really had to take care of that. And I had to take a picture. Yes. And, and did it, they let you smile? Yeah, they let me smile. I still lied about my weight. 
I remember that my weight used to be on the driver's license. It was like my goal weight. And then I actually surpassed that at one point, you know? Yeah. And there was a minute where I was really skinny, you guys, when my kids were in strollers and they let me walk them everywhere. Dude, she was. Yeah. At Disneyland, Fine. I have that photo. You're like, and a so string I was, but so then I was skinnier than the weight I lied about on my driver's license. And so that used to piss me off. But I continued with that weight. Now it's again my it's goal. Your weight. goal weight. Okay. It's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They didn't let me smile with teeth. I think that this is a win for California versus Texas. I mean, I actually got in and out of there without an appointment and I got the real ID within a half hour. That's amazing. It's because people don't know that you could do that, I think. I had all my documents. I read the website correctly. I had to bring my damn marriage certificate. Yeah, it's a situation and two bills. It's like, yeah, to prove. It's like registering your kid for school. Can you just look at my ID? You have my thumbprint. You need my marriage certificate? But okay. everything. Yeah. All right. All right. Are we talking? Yeah. I have a crime or you have a crime? I have a crime. Okay, good. Because I, I mean, I, I have one I'm working on, but I could give you a little snippet. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> so not my week. You need some more vitamins. Yes, dude. Or maybe I just got overdose some. on vitamins. Tab actually is a very big vitamin fan. I actually got rid of all my vitamins recently and just am taking some like guts supplement health and I haven't even been good about taking it. So I probably need to restart my vitamin trend. Well, I hope everybody out there took their vitamins today because this case is a little, it has a lot of moving parts. Okay. I tried by. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. This week's case is a listener suggestion from Christine Pranks. I feel like Christine, I feel like you've suggested cases before. Yeah. And I like that last name, by the way, I kind of think that you've got to be real funny having that last name. Well, yeah. Her name is actually like Christine Federhoff Franks. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. our maiden name up there. Yeah, I but, know who she um, is. I feel like clearly she gets us. I mean, if we've used, you know, more than one. Right. Yeah. I So keep them coming, girl. Listen, there are people that get us and then there are people that aren't that give us bad reviews. So if you haven't given us a review, please do so. Gretchen's going to kill me for asking, but. The fire. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> hey, I also would like to shout out listener Krista Valentine because she commented on Christine suggestion and said it was a good one. Oh, good. We'll see. We got multiple. Okay, that counts, right? Uh-huh. Okay, so today's case begins with the love story of two crazy kids in Connecticut, George Smith and Jennifer Hagel. These two had everything in the world going for them in 2005. For one, they are both really good looking people. They look like Ken and Barbie. So, you know, go them. They were very newly wed and had just had a lavish wedding in Newport, Connecticut, where George's family has a summer house. Sounds bougie, right? It does sound bougie, man. Uh huh. Summer house. George had to take over his family's upscale liquor store. He was 26 and had earned a business degree and planned on leveling the family business up, get it online, stuff like that. That was all, you know, remember 2005. That was a new way to be. Mm -hmm. As for Jennifer, she was going to start a new job as a teacher in the fall. But for now, they didn't have a care in the world because they were on a $10,000 luxury Mediterranean cruise for their honeymoon. They had settled into the cruise life routine, disembarking for sightseeing during the day, then coming back on board for dinner, and then it's on to the casino and the discotheque. Sounds dreamy. Dude, I love a cruise. Like that. Yeah. Well, it was dreamy until it wasn't. On July 4th, George and Jennifer spent a wonderful day together in Mykonos, Greece. Mm-hmm. Been there? I did go to Greece last summer, but I didn't make a tip. Wait, did I go to Mykonos? I, I went to Santorini. Did. Yeah. I think I did go to Mykonos also for maybe a hot Sounds skip and a job, cool. but it's definitely for couples only. I would not suggest taking your children to Greece or maybe if Athens or something, but like on those islands, there's not a lot for them to do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, when George and Jennifer were there, they ran into a celebrity. Oh. Celebrity that was really happening at the time. Tara Reed. Oh, yeah. American Pie and everything. Okay. It's a hot mess, but yeah. George got a pic. Okay. Well, stop it. I'm going to tell you. Okay. <laughs> okay. George got a picture with her. Okay. You know, Tara is someone you don't really hear about anymore. And she used to be all over the tabloids. I believe Tab just called her a hot mess. Things like that. I don't let go. I mean, I hear a name I haven't heard in a while. I got to look them up. Well, I did. And she did have a rough go of it for a few years, but I just want to report she's looking 
healthy and has a right. couple of films coming out. So congrats on the comeback era. Oh, that's good. Okay. I mean, I just remember the tabloid situation going on. Mm -hmm. Well, she's all grown up now. Okay. Okay, so back to George and Jen after their day of fun in the sun in Greece. It wrapped up with their usual routine, which again was dinner on board, then the casino, where they congregated with a group of young men they had become friendly with on the ship. There was some drinking going on, as you can imagine. But what was being drunk was an interesting choice. George had smuggled a bottle of absinthe on board. Okay. Absinthe, I have not partaken in. Have you? No, but it was available in Greece. Like it was like a thing. Uh, yeah. But it's supposedly, remember, the only thing I know about it is that's what they drank in Moulin Rouge, the movie. And then they kind of like see fairies. And yeah. Yeah, I know. They say you don't really hallucinate on it. I don't. Okay. Here's right. the thing. Okay. I haven't partaken. And, and I'm a partaker. Here's why it's not appealing to me. It's it's made from wormwood oil and fennel and other stuff that tastes like butt. Shit. Yeah, okay? I know. And it's 90 to 148 proof, which means it's like fire in your mouth. And I'm just not into like but tasting fire. <laughs> Maybe uh, when we were like 21. One with Jägermeister, like vomit. Okay. I hated Jägermeister, but I still did it. We did it. We did it all the time. I don't know why we did it. It's so gross. We never liked it. No. And there's that other one that, that starts with an S that tastes like black licorice. It's also so disgusting. What? There's Fernet the Branca like that or Goldschlager. No, I like Goldschlager. Well, George was taking shots of the absinthe with his new boat buddies. Now, this was probably not the best choice for George because he had some anxiety issues, which is very common. And he had been addressing them with his doctor who prescribed him Zoloft and Clonezepan. Mm -hmm. So although we know that George took his prescriptions responsibly, I don't think it's a stretch to imagine the amplified effects of mixing pills with all the booze could have left him not thinking clearly. Okay. Because, so real quick, yes. it's called Sambuca. Oh, Sambuca. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But they say that absinthe tastes like Sambuca also. So it's okay, it well, tastes I actually like that. Sambuca. Really? It's like yeah. the black licorice taste. Yuck. I didn't say I liked it. I just don't hate it. <laughs> okay. Well, then maybe you would like, shit, another spider just dropped down. I swear to you, this little place that I'm recording, there's so many spiders. Okay, go ahead. All right. We're talking, maybe he took his meds and alcohol doesn't mix very well with him. So maybe he's not thinking clearly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just saying that because he was heard talking about having a lot of money in his cabin by various yes. passengers. Yeah. And, you know, if you have a lot of money, really in any situation, it's a good idea to keep a low profile about it right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, George wasn't. Some people say they heard him say he had $14,000 in his cabin. Some people nice. say they heard him say $50,000. Why would you take that much cash? Yeah, it could have been wedding money. It could have been casino weddings. We don't really know, right? Okay. Now, you know, even a couple of Ken and Barbies on their honeymoon can start fripping on each other when there is an excess of alcohol involved, right? Trip. Yes. And there was an altercation between the honeymoon nurse. It started when witnesses saw the assistant casino manager getting a little too close for comfort with Jennifer at the casino. And then when Jennifer and George and the group of young men they had befriended took the party to the disco, the two were seen sitting closely together on the couch again. George called Jennifer a name, which she did not appreciate. And so she kneed him in the balls so hard he dropped to the floor. Oh my God. Have you ever done that? to Jeremiah. No, I have never <laughs> met my husband in the ball. You know, but I have certainly wanted to. Sure. Gotten angry at him it, when an excess of alcohol was involved. Yes. Mostly um, it's the way around though, in truth. Yeah, true. So Jennifer, after that, the name, Jennifer left the disco and a witness says the casino manager followed, but he denies that happened. A crew member rode the elevator with Jennifer and watched her exit and head in the opposite direction of her cabin. At 3.30 a.m., approximately 20 minutes Minutes after Jennifer left the disco, the disco closed. And since George was so intoxicated at this point, his new boat friends helped him 
into his cabin. When he got there, Jennifer was not there. The group of men went looking for her for 30 minutes and then returned George to his cabin. According to the four men, they got George to bed and left and that was all. But the passengers in George's neighboring cabins would disagree. At 4.05 a.m., George's neighbor, who happened to be a vacationing police officer, was awoken by what he thought sounded like a drinking game turned into an argument. He also said it sounded like furniture was being moved. So he called security. Okay. The neighbors on the opposite side recalled being woken up by a loud noise and a horrendous sounding thud. Well, security did not arrive at the cabin until 4.30 a.m. What they reported seeing was teens just leaving. So they just figured, you know, party was over. And so they did not further investigate. Even though the police officer in the neighboring cabin, you know, popped out his head and told them, you guys better get in there because that room is trashed. The police officer said, Says at this point, he saw three young men leaving in the hall. And this is an important point because according to the group of young men, all four of them left at the same time. But he mm -hmm. saw three and you would think he's a police officer. So he like, I think he takes good notes. Yeah. Okay. The group of young men say they ordered after they left George, they ordered room service and they even took pictures of the feast that they ordered. They do have a time stamped picture from like, you know, digital camera or whatever mm -hmm. of said feast but the ship has no record of their room service order. So, I mean, I'm just telling you that because we're just noting, it's like, it's a little sus, okay? Around- Wouldn't they have an order number? Well, yeah, the ship keeps a record of everything that is ordered. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's certainly possible to take an order and have someone not write it down or whatever, but- it just, it's strange. Yeah, okay. So around the same time, the men would have been, you know, eating all of their room service, 4.45 a.m., and Jennifer was found asleep in the hallway. The crew members that found her intoxicated and passed out put her in a wheelchair and took her back to her cabin. When they arrived, there was no sign of George. The crew members reported that she told them that sometimes he sleeps in friends' cabins. That doesn't make sense on your honeymoon, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that doesn't make sense in your, on your honeymoon and they are not really there with any friends. Right. It's just so is she just that. still so wasted that she's well, like. She denies even making the statement, but she doesn't even remember being wheeled back at all. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like she yeah, could just be totally out of it. And maybe okay. she was drinking the absinthe too and like hallucinating. Well, maybe, but she doesn't remember drinking absinthe that night despite George taking shots. Okay. Okay. What we could gather is that she wasn't that worried about George being there because clearly she went back to sleep. So at that point, she's not concerned. Mm -hmm. Well, he's a grown man. Yeah. Well, at 730 that morning, a teenage girl spotted a huge pool of blood on the ship's deck below Jennifer and George's cabin. And she took a picture of it. Other passengers also began to spot the blood and the crew was alerted. At this point, they begin going from cabin to cabin, accounting for the passengers in the blood spot vicinity. When they went to George and Jennifer's cabin, no one was there. So they paged them. They found Jennifer at the spa where she had arrived in the same dress she was wearing the night before, an hour and a half early for the massage she had booked. First of all, I think I can't believe you could be out until three o'clock in the morning and arrive at the spa at 8 a.m. I would have missed that appointment, right? <laughs> well, I wouldn't if I could you do shit like that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> an hour and a half early sounds real weird. Yeah, it's weird. Okay. I don't get anywhere an hour and a half early. I don't even get anywhere early at all. So. And I, yeah. And then wearing the same dress, I mean, is like. That's weird too. Yeah. So they informed her, her husband, George was missing and there was cause to believe he was overboard. Oh. Jennifer was in shock after giving the news and was visibly devastated. You know, I mean, it's unimaginable. Okay. But they, wait, I just was thinking sometimes they say get there early so you could use all the spa services like the sauna and the you know all that shit okay that they have in there so like some people spend they get one massage but they spend like all day at the spa that's true yeah maybe she just couldn't sleep i don't like spas 
So that wouldn't be me. You have to yeah, be quiet. So true. Yeah. yeah. You have to be quiet. You know, they always want you to be quiet. Yeah, they do. They got mad at me the other day when I was in oh, Cabo. I- they were like, your guys are too loud. And I don't like people touching me. So that's not my thing. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, so they asked Jennifer to recount the night and she informed them that she had been with the four young men at the casino, her and George, but she has no memory of the night after the casino. So the ship's next port was Turkey. So Turkish officials boarded the boat and examined George and Jennifer's room. There were two small drops of blood, like really small, Mm -hmm. on the bed and there was a bloody handprint on the rail. They questioned the four young men who Jennifer had said she, you know, they'd been hanging out with, who all said the last time they saw George, he was in bed about to go to sleep. They decided the cause of death was accidental. They concluded George likely fell over while he was outside smoking a cigar. Dude, those guys pushed him overboard and stole his money. Right. Did they find any money? (laughs) Yeah. No, they didn't. Okay, so yes, this is going to blow your mind how it was all handled. Okay, Jennifer was taken to a clean cabin and told she could shower and was given some comfortable clothes from the cruise line. Jennifer and the cruise line have differing points of view of how her treatment was during this difficult situation. Jennifer says she was not allowed to call George's parents. They disagree. She was, though, able to call her parents, who were then given the task to call George's family. Jennifer says that the cruise line packed up her things haphazardly, and then she was left in Turkey with no money, no plane ticket, no hotel, nothing. Not even left like to get back on the boat to go wherever she was supposed to go. Mm -mm. Holy shit, dude. Father was able to like wire her money and arrange a plane ticket for her and she managed to get back to Connecticut. Meanwhile, back on the ship, the police officer was blown away by the fact that the room that he was sure was a crime scene based on what he had heard the night before was not being treated like one. People were in and out of it and it was cleaned and cleared in no time. Yeah. Back in the U.S., the story had broke and you know, it's it's one of those stories that caught on. This beautiful all-American couple on their honeymoon and the husband goes overboard and the wife doesn't remember what happened. And she kicked him in the balls before. Yeah, I mean, there's all different passengers that had had experiences with them telling, you know, all their varying stories, Mm -hmm. right? Some of them had the balls story. Some passengers were like, they seemed so in love. They were so nice. I can't imagine. They didn't seem that drunk, you know? But it's like you're encountered with all these different people, right? Yeah. So the cruise line tried to basically kill the story and they were just insinuating it was it was a possible suicide or a tragic accident because you know it's real bad for business to have murders be happening on board what cruise line was it you all can look it up but i don't want to say okay you know what else is bad for business what? sexual assaults two what? days after george went missing an 18 year old girl reported being sexually assaulted by the group of four young men on the Stop boat it. where were these guys from also okay. america or they were from america America, three of them were like Russian immigrants. Okay. Okay. And one of them is from here, actually lives not too far from me. Okay. Okay. So the girl reported the, you know, sexual assault by the group of men on the boat. They denied the encounter was non-consensual and they were never charged in relation to that incident, but they were all kicked off the boat in Naples. As the story was dominating the headlines, George's parents boarded a plane. They went to the Greek island of Samos, which was the closest place to where George could have swam at the time he went overboard. They checked the hospital, handed out flyers on the island, and they chartered a boat and went looking for their son. But eventually they had to accept that he was taken by the sea and they weren't going to find him. How sad though, right? Awful. Awful. But, you know, they were bound and determined to find out what happened, even if they weren't going to find his body. They wanted answers from the cruise line. They wanted all the information that they had, you know, show us the logs, but the cruise line was not into turning over their records. George's sister, her name is Bree. She's a real ball buster and an attorney. And so she was not about to let them get away with withholding shit. She enlisted the help of their local representative and she contacted the FBI. So it's complicated when crimes happen on board and especially in 2005, because maritime laws are different. It's complicated. Trust me on that one. Okay. Yeah. And it depends which 
country may or may not get involved depending on where the boat is at the time. And it also depends on where the boat deems its home port is. This boat is flagged the Bahamas. So what George's family learned was that the cruise line did not have to actually report to anyone. They did not have to report to the U.S. authorities, and they didn't even have to notify family members in the event of a missing passenger. Stop it. Yeah. They also learned that the cruise lines are a real force to be reckoned with as in a $35 billion a year industry that has been going you know, largely unregulated. And it sounds like they liked it that way. Oh, why not? They can have all this shit happen and no, nothing. That and you can imagine why they would want it to just go away. Right. I, you know, worked on not anything like a cruise ship, but like a smaller vessel and was on a boat when a passenger died. And right. you would think everyone would want to, you know, go home. Well, we left it up to the passengers and even some of this person's family was on the boat. No, they don't want to quit their vacation. They want to keep going. Really? Yeah, really. How did they take the, the dead passenger off the boat? Helicopter. Okay. So and then it was like, let's just keep. So I can just imagine as usual, so was like 35 passengers, the boat I was on. I mean, this yeah. is, you know, thousands of people. It's like 2,500. I think it's 2,500 people were on the boat. It's like a floating city. All those people still want to go vacay. Well, they They're just paid they they all, keep moving. They all paid $10,000 too. And right. they don't know who George is. So, I mean, you can understand at that point, a 30 35 passenger crew is kind oh. of a little more intimate. Everybody has met each other. So if something devastating and everybody on yours, everybody's doing the same thing, you know, you're all diving. And so when a tragedy happens, I would think it would be more tragic for everybody. But on a floating sea of, you know, cruise ship, there are a dime a dozen. But the clients have insurance for that. I mean, they could send everybody off in Italy, get them a hotel and send them home. I, I don't know if, but I can, I can just say if it was my loved one, you would want that to happen, but of course. see why it didn't. Yes. Right. Okay. Yes. While the Smith family was full steam ahead on their mission to get answers about what had happened to George, their relationship with Jennifer soured. They were angry with her. They were not buying that she couldn't remember what happened and they weren't thrilled she had come home so quickly. They also say that she told them the FBI told her that she couldn't discuss it with them anymore. And the FBI told them like, no, we didn't actually actually say that. They also say that she told them that she did not want to testify in any civil suit and that didn't sit well with them either because why wouldn't she want to testify, you know, in the hopes of getting answers? Yeah, that's weird. Well, the other thing that I am imagining came into play is that Jennifer is actually pretty stoic. I've watched a lot of interviews with her and she doesn't show a lot of emotion. George's parents and sister, on the other hand, are very emotional people. Uh, Jennifer's lack of emotion definitely plays a role in one the story made headlines for so long because, you know, that compiled with her claim to not remember anything left people to speculate. You know, she's just that way because she knows something and she's just not saying it. I don't know if she knows more for sure or not. I mean, I'll give you my thoughts kind of when we get into more stuff at the end, but I think it's possible that she was just kind of an immature spoiled girl. She was so young and so cute and had not been through enough life to march down to the Turkish embassy and demand they get the FBI involved and hold the boat like the Smith family would have liked her to. She didn't know what to do. No. In the face and of a devastating situation, she called her daddy and went home. Yeah. She's that girl. I don't blame her for that. You know? How old was she? 24. Yeah, that's young. She's real cute. I just looked her up. She is real cute. Yeah. And he, George, real handsome. Real cute. Yeah, yeah. real cute. Okay. So so the Smith family did have to put their hard feelings aside and align themselves with Jennifer because she was the exeter of or executor of George's estate and they wanted to sue the cruise line for wrongful death with her. Mm -hmm. The Smiths have stated that their entire motivation for doing this was to be able to depose witnesses like the four young men. Yeah. And the records from the cruise line and get the answers they deserve and justice for George. So they had an arrangement with Jennifer to move forward with this. But aside from the lawsuit, you know, they're not speaking to her. Well, Jennifer had decided that she needed to do some image cleanup. So she got a publicist and she went on Oprah. Oh. The pictures the media had been showing of her up until this point were like her wedding snaps and her in her bikini on her honeymoon. And so it definitely helped change public opinion of 
Jennifer when she lost the spray tan and toned down her look and sat down with Oprah and Gail in a real classy suit to give her side of the story. Okay. She said she believed it was possible that her and George were drugged and that it's been torture for her to not remember anything. She doesn't remember kneeing George in the balls in the club, but acknowledged that it could have happened. And how terrible is that? That that is what she has to live with now, her last interaction with him. She also says that she showed up at the spa early because... The time zones kept changing and she sucks at keeping track of them. Like I sort of get that too. Yeah. She said she felt her fallout with George's family was because of misplaced anger and she would trade places with George if she could, but she can't, you know, and she's real sorry that they lost their only son. Dude, by the way, she might have been dead also if she didn't get in an argument with him and walk away. True. True. Right. Because I'm going to tell you the possible theories, but we don't know. We still don't know what happened. Right. Well, Jennifer sat down with the president of the cruise line on this Oprah episode, and the two went at it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Jennifer showed some cojones I, that I, you would not think she had in her. She was like, what the fuck? Is it policy to leave someone in a foreign country after their loved one goes missing? And he kept saying, we disagree with how you were treated, Jennifer. He's like talking down to her. Mm-hmm. And he says- Because she's we, a pretty girl. Yeah. He's- said we did the best we could and I was didn't did have someone stay with you and Jennifer was like no it was not like that you didn't actually do shit for me someone brought me magazines and a sedative and by the way you rushed to judgment and didn't preserve a crime scene you know that would have been the least you could have done too not clean up the room right because you could have gotten fingerprints and all kinds of shit yes they could have at least closed it off until they were back in port right he denies that but there are so many witnesses that say oh no it was cleaned up and done with yeah. right so who are you gonna believe right he tried saying that the turkish authorities did a full forensic investigation which again is like bullshit i mean they mm-hmm. left like on time that evening you know yeah so after and then jennifer lays into him telling him you know all that sucks but you know what else sucks after i got home i received a bar bill in the mail oh my god <laughs> Can you imagine? So Oprah and Gail actually kind of like step in and like guide this man by telling him, we think what you're trying to say is you're sorry your company fell short at the worst possible moment in her life. And you are also real sorry she lost her damn husband on her honeymoon. And the least you could have done was buy her a plane ticket. And he did agree. (laughs) But worst customer service ever. Real lucky he had Oprah and Gail there to help him. Okay. Oh my God. But he did agree and, you know, attempt to give Jennifer like a real sincere, you know, apology. But I mean, I thought it still came off like he didn't give a shit about anything except for attempting to restore the cruise line's reputation in the interest of selling cruises. Because this story breaking did correlate with a significant decline in business for them. Yeah, so I can imagine. Yeah. So remember, all this is happening while Jennifer is still, you know, aligned with George's family for the civil suit they have going on against the cruise line. Well, turns out her agreement to align herself with George's parents wasn't actually happening. After that meeting on Oprah, where she met the president, she started meeting with him without lawyers in secret locations. Meeting like, who? The president of the cruise line. Why? Met with him in like an airport hangar to hash out at the settlement. No, girl. That's, that's shady that's business. That's I'm thinking, right? Yeah, you can't do that. And without lawyers. <laughs> That president of that company is like an idiot too, but I mean, come on. Yeah. Okay. So the little meetings were a closely guarded secret for a while. Now, remember I told you they had, the Smith family had enlisted the help of their local representative. Well, because the member of Congress that was helping the Smith family was on the security council, he decided to investigate the lack of accountability the cruise lines had and he held congressional hearings in regards to it. It was a real big deal. Okay. Mm -hmm. The Smith and Jennifer all prepared statements at the hearings, as well as like other victims of cruise line crimes. And the outcome is something we should all actually be like real thankful for, which is that the 
cruise lines have to report crimes on boards to American agencies when it involves, you know, American citizens. I read a lot about crimes on boards and the most horrendous were sexual assaults committed by crew against children. Oh my God, that's awful. It is unthinkable, but what really sucks is because the companies don't, the different cruise lines don't communicate with each other. Like someone can get fired on one cruise line and then they just go work for another. Mm -hmm. The good news is that since those hearings, there have been safety regulations added to the cruise lines every year since then. You can go on the Department of Transportation website and see how many incidents each cruise line has had in any given year. Everything from, you know, robbery to, you know, missing to sexual assault, like whatever. So, I mean, the the numbers are not high, but still, you know, shit happens. Right. Oh, I mean, I would be real mindful if you're planning on setting sail. Okay. So back to Jennifer and her shady backdoor settlement. So she had a basically just a verbal agreement with the Smiths to file this wrongful death lawsuit with them. And this was really important to them because the cruise line was still not turning over any information that they had requested. And they really wanted those four men to be deposed. But what happened was without breaking it to them personally, Jennifer settled for $1.1 million with the cruise line and just left the Smiths hanging. Now, in fairness to her, I think that I would want answers more than cash. But, you know, Jennifer was getting ridiculed like in the headlines, like she had been living under like such a cloud. Mm -hmm. And so I think she just wanted to move on. So, I mean, I don't totally fault her for that. I think she should have told the Smiths personally that she just, she wanted to settle. Yeah. She said she couldn't go back to teaching, which I can understand that too after all this. So she actually got a job working for Michael J. Fox's foundation, you know, for Parkinson's disease. I'm not mad at that, right? I'm not mad at that either. Yeah. Okay. Well, the Smith family was having none of it. They went off about Jennifer and told the public she entered into secret negotiations and deceived them. And they believed that she had done so because she has something to hide. They also said, like, we just wonder what George would think of her now and her payout. I mean, you know, it's harsh, right? Mm -hmm. Well, Jennifer defended herself in a statement saying that she had fully cooperated with the FBI in the investigation and passed a polygraph. The Smiths filed their own lawsuit against Royal Caribbean and they appealed Jennifer's settlement from them in probate court. They actually sold their summer home where George and Jennifer had gotten married to pay for all their legal fees. Is that worth it? I know. You know, I don't know. They faced off with Jennifer in probate court and they lost. Her settlement was upheld. The civil case was dismissed initially. Then they appealed that. And then they finally settled in 2009. At the time they settled, Jennifer had remarried. So part of their settlement agreement was that the cruise line would release information to them, like the key card records for everyone, you know, all the people involved Mm -hmm. coming and going. The contents of Georgia's safe, they never knew what would, you know, what was left in there. The video surveillance. After they they settled, they got 1.3 million, which at that point did not even, it like made a dent in the legal fees they'd already like accrued. But they got more than she did. Are still, And they're still waiting on some of the records that they were promised. They're never getting it. Yeah. Okay. Before they settled, they were able to depose the four men. Three out of the four of them took the fifth. The one man who answered questions in his deposition is named Gregory Rosenberg. He gave his deposition from prison where he was for drug trafficking. You can't judge a book by its cover. In Houston's opinion, it's not what Greg Rosenberg says that seems deceptive. It's often what he doesn't say. What we should hear and see his focus on is, I didn't do it. It wasn't me. You got the wrong guy. Instead, we don't. Where we hear his focus so many times are reasons why he wouldn't do this. But in no way, shape, or form would I ever do anything like that to to an individual. No reason that that's not me. And it appears that some questions are more difficult for Greg than others. He said, yeah, 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 we just, we dropped off George, you know, I don't have the heart to kill him. And he said that they were in the cabin eating tuna fish sandwiches for room service, which I mean, I find kind of sus. I've never wanted tuna when I had the late night munchies. Like I want to right? I, you are not ordering tuna sandwich. You, you ordered those fucking tuna sandwiches earlier in the day. And that's what you were eating because they don't I have any. Tuna, but late night, no, no. 
Okay. But whatever. I mean, they had tuna- that picture of the tuna sandwiches for like alibi purposes only that they had left over in their room. They didn't really like eat the them. date was wrong on the camera. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's very I mean, Come on. They're savvy individuals. They're drug, drug traffickers. They know how to pull shit. Well, po- it's possible. Okay. Aside what have from these four tuna, been up to lately? I'm going to tell you. Okay. So aside from the tuna thing, I'm, he still sounded like a liar, even if he hadn't said they were, even if he had said a proper answer, like mozzarella sticks. Okay. Like, <laughs> That's what I would be ordering. Totally. Right? Burgers, fries, mozzarella sticks, fried pickles. Thanks. Yes. So in 2020, he was free. Okay. No longer in prison for drug trafficking and was murdered outside <gasps> of his home in Florida. So sadly, there's no chance that he'll be doing any more talking. Well, he's meeting his maker and maybe he's talking to him too. Yeah, hopefully. So George's case was an ongoing investigation with the FBI until 2015. And then they said the case is closed until new evidence is introduced. And the Smiths are still very much pushing forward with the evidence. They want the evidence. Yes. So they have made public on their Facebook page everything they were able to receive from the cruise line after they settled and the tips that they have received as well. They had a website. According to their Justice for George Smith Facebook page, there are leads that they feel should be pursued. Like they have received various tips that George won a lot of money in the casino that would account for, you know, why he was talking about having so much cash. They have a problem with this because Jennifer says that they only ever won around $800. So they're like, why are all these people saying he won big? Well, $800 is a lot. And maybe somebody thinks it's more maybe but he's, he's like oh i got all this money i went all this money maybe he's one of a he's a big talker you know there's all those people that like act like they have so he's much but they don't drinking yeah i mean there it's possible that there's something suspicious but it's also possible i wouldn't go off that one thing and right. you know okay based on some of their posts it seems like they have a real problem with jennifer saying pills and alcohol could have been a contributing factor which is also like it probably was yeah. Okay. By the way, they didn't know that George took any prescriptions until he died. So I just think it's not Jennifer's fault that she was truthful about that. Yeah. You know, I don't take that as victim, you know, shaming. I mean, he took prescriptions, right? You know, I'm not blaming him for taking prescriptions. By the way, it's not like he was alcohol. buying them, not, you know, oh, and the he had the exact, they, what was left was the exact amount that he should have had left. Yeah. You know? Right. You know, I mean, I'm just saying, I don't think you can fault her for making the point that he was mixing pills with alcohol. You know, I love pills and alcohol, but I I definitely am more likely to be involved in an accident when I'm mixing them. Yeah, for sure. I'm just saying like, it's just, I'm just being honest. Okay. I know. (laughs) So the Smith family put They put everything on their Facebook page and they are not holding back. Okay. One theory that they posted is based on a tip they received in 2019 that Jennifer was having sex with multiple crew members that night and they videoed it and blackmailed her and then went back to the room and George refused to give them the money. And that's why he was killed. I don't think so. To support this, they post a letter from Jennifer's attorney to Roy to the cruise line asking if they have possession of a video of Jennifer having sex with men that are not her husband. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I feel for it's just they, asking, all they have is a letter asking for that. And they got this tip in 2019. I mean, this mm-hmm. happened in 2005. Okay. I feel for them, but I don't like that they are trying so hard to humiliate her. I mean, I don't think that yeah. is enough to put something publicly like that out there. Let me ask you, when did her attorney send that? Was that in 2005? I think it was between 2005, 2007. I mean, it's an I odd guess you thing. don't know. I guess you don't. It's an odd thing to send. Yeah. But I think it's not concrete enough of a theory, even with the letter in my eyes to put it out there. I think it teeters on more of the side of just vengeful 
than the pursuit of justice. Yeah. So I would probably just keep that, you know, to myself. Right. Okay. So at the same time, I do get why they don't like her that much. You know, she's not like super likable and she just, she just comes off like so cold and she says shallow shit. Like when she was testifying at the congressional hearings and she was explaining her whole ordeal, she says like, and I had to wear clothes with the cruise company logo on them. How humiliating. I mean, like, why is this something you were remotely concerned about? Yeah. Like your husband's missing. I mean, put me in a paint suit or like whatever. I, you like, who, who cares? And it was, they brought you clothes. Girlfriend, you were the one who showed up in your last night's, you know, little dress, right? So, I mean, that's kind of annoying. At the same time, I do think the Smith family is admirable in other ways. They don't just advocate for George. They speak out and help other families of cruise line crimes. So, I mean, that's nice. That's more than nice, actually. The three men that are still living that were part of the, you know, four that were suspected for so long for being involved in George's death are all living pretty normal lives. One is a lawyer. The last update I could find on Jennifer is she had two children and is living with her husband and children in New York City. The Smith family still owns the liquor store. And also one of my resources was the book Man Overboard by Jennifer Lowndes. It was very insightful, but I only recommend it if you never plan on cruising. Lastly, I just wanted to say that, the, I mean, the real tragedy of this whole case is that George lost his life. In every interview about him, he sounds like he was he was Amazing. a good one. Yeah. He was just a really good, nice guy. And I'm sure that he is still deeply missed. That is so sad, dude. Yeah. It was these guys. One. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it was definitely foul play was involved for sure. Let's just hope it was the one that got murdered. And then we're like, OK, karma's a bitch. Right. I really respect and am thankful because even if I don't go on big cruises, you do, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> that you do have to report. I want yeah. these big, I, you know, I want them to be held accountable and have to report to U.S. authorities and all of that. I mean, we're all a lot safer. I, I, I do think it's really great. But I also just think I, she's 24. I know. I'm glad she got to move on with her life. I don't think she's a horrible person. And let's right. just float that theory that even if she was, did have sex with some other people, she didn't want George killed. How right. horrible that she has to live with all of that. And I don't think it's true either, but I just think it's really sad that everyone is left so empty. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, thank you for bringing all of that to our attention and making us very scared to cruise ever again. Um, <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> I did look at your hair. Did you tell your girl not to use the Olaplex on it this time? She doesn't use Olaplex on my hair, but she told me Olaplex is okay. Eh, she's wrong. <laughs> she told me not to flat iron it anymore. She always tells me that. Yeah. And how often do you flat iron it? I don't know. Every couple days. Oh my God, you do, dude? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what's breaking your hair. Oh <laughs> my God. I didn't know you did that. You cannot be flat ironing your hair. Or I have to like curl it. Right no, now it's just neither, straight. neither. Neither. You only do that on special occasions. That's it. Or get the like curlers that you don't have to worry about with heat, you know, heatless curlers that you sleep in overnight, something like that. I did bring up that I am chairing an auction and somebody asked us on our Spotify where they can reach out if they have something to donate to my silent auction. Oh, yeah. And so you can email me at housewivesoftruecrime at gmail.com if you want to donate something to the National Charity League auction for next year. That'd be amazing. And also thank you all for giving us reviews. I saw a bunch come through. Thank you. Thank you. And what else? Scratch. If you haven't checked us out on Housewives, a true crime group on Facebook, you can get involved and TikTok, Instagram, all the jam. And until Thursday, we'll be back with our bonus episodes. So check us out there. You can go to the clink clink club on Apple or patreon.com forward slash housewives of true crime. Thanks for listening, guys. Clink clink. Clink clink. 